Now they can't safely block that well because we have the lightning helix. So let's attack again. So this is where things get l absolutely insane. So whatever they block, okay, they're going to get punished for. Prepare for trouble and make it double to protect the world from devastation, to unite all peoples within our nation, to denounce the evils of truth and love, to extend our reach to the stars above. Jesse and James, Team Rocket blasts off at the speed of light. Surrender now or prepare to fight. Hi guys and welcome back to a new video. So if you don't know what that intro was, then I do apologise, but if you do know, you know. So <laughs> moving on to the deck itself. This deck's called Double Trouble, and that's because it's using Ishin, two heavens as one, a red, white, black, three, four human samurai. And it says, if a creature attacking causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Bear in mind, this also triggers when opponents attack, causing your permanents to have triggered abilities. So that's pretty cool, works both ways. The deck is filled with a lot of creatures that basically have triggers when you attack. Um, so let's have a look at some of the creatures in the deck. So I've put the filter into the um, deck editor that says whenever attack. So this will bring up everything that's uh, in the deck that has these words in it. So you can see here I've got quite a lot. Um, some of the standard ones are Croxa. Whenever this comes in, sacrifice it unless it escaped. Um, whenever it enters or attacks, each opponent discards a card, then each opponent who didn't discard loses three life, and you can get out of your graveyard. This is one of the most strongest cards to put in the deck, I think, because if you're getting double triggers off this, it's just mental. Your opponent's not going to have any cards left in the hand, they're going to lose life, and um, swinging in with a 6-6 six, six anyway, and then taking another 6 from the double trigger, if you have Ishin out, is mental. You've got Robert the Rich, which is fantastic against Control, because early 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 game against control they're going to possibly struggle to kill this and if you're exiling two cards off the top of their deck being able to cast them is fantastic even the simple stuff like glint steve's knife siphoner whenever it enters or attacks you get an energy and beginning of your upkeep you may pay two to draw a colors alive so if you attack once with this you'll have enough energy to then pay the next upkeep to draw a card pardon me and um this acts a bit like a phyrexian arena so it's pretty good but on a creature and yeah, there's quite a few samurai in here as well. Um, a lot from the new set, obviously. you got Heiko Yamazaki the General whenever it attacks or a warrior. Uh, so whenever any samurai or warrior attacks, which is awesome, alone, you may cast an artifact from your grave by this turn. So if you put something in the graveyard for any reason, like discarding, your opponent destroys it, you can then recast it from your graveyard. And uh, obviously with Ishin out, that's two triggers. So yeah, as long as you're a bit nifty and careful about how you make the deck, um, you can get some great synergies and yeah, if, obviously Atali at the top end whenever you attack exile top card of each place library You may cast any number of spells without paying the mana cost. This is really cool um, I've not managed to get this off yet, but if I do uh, Yeah, it's gonna be glorious. So yeah, if you like the look of the deck Don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe to the channel to see more wacky and weird videos like this um, also, if you like my intro, give me a like as well and subscribe. Um, that really means a lot because I'm essentially embarrassing myself in front of loads of people. Um, I hope you appreciate that. So yeah, let's get into the video. Opponent goes first with Kumina, Tyrant of Araska. So they're going to be a Merfolk Simic deck. We are going to be a deck that doesn't have three lands. So I think... I think I want to mulligan this. Um, it's a shame because the rest of the cards are great, but we just can't do much else. This is kind of good. We have access to all the colours here. And a lightning bolt, which is crucial because they're probably going to get some early merfolk out. Um, yeah, let's go for the tap land here. And then we can go for black source. So the thriving lands are pretty decent. They're like gates, but you fix the mana however you want. Arcane Signet. Okay, so they're going big. And yeah, let's play planes and pass the turn here. So we've got access to quite a nice number of removal spells. And it's very important in an aggro deck because if you don't remove the early threats, then um, you're not getting through. So we're definitely going to exile that because that gives them way too much card advantage. <clears throat> And yeah, let's get Ishin out. Um, 
Ishin's one of those weird generals that he doesn't actually do anything by himself. And there might be some weird corner cases where he's actually not good because let's say you have a detrimental trigger that triggers when an opponent attacks. That will trigger twice. You have to be careful, but uh, hopefully we I've built the deck in a way that this doesn't actually hurt so much. <clears throat> so let's attack. One alternative method to making this is you can put equipments in that give you triggers on attack. Like I think there's a few swords that trigger whenever you attack and it gives you, um, you can venture into the dungeon a couple of times. So I think I want to try and get rid of the Round Walker because if they cast Merfolk from the top, that's going to be pretty bad for us. Do they have a way to protect it? Snakeskin Veil, so I'm happy to, oh I can't kill it because it's all types. <clears throat> it's a shapeshifter. Damn, I've never even thought of that before. So Power Word Kill can never kill a single shapeshifter. Okay, fair enough. That's quite annoying. So I guess we go for the Maze Mind Tome. And the Windscarred Crag, yeah. It's, um, this is why Magic's such a great game, because you see all these synergies that, or anti-synergies that you never thought of until you see it in the field. Uh, hopefully we can kill the Camino because that's got Narset, oh blimey. Mind and body should Narset in a Murpho day. Okay, like fair enough. <clears throat> your it's a pretty try-hard card. Or oh, they missed, probably because they're playing a creature deck, and Narset goes in a control deck normally. Let's scry one, so we can't draw two cards a turn. Oh, we've got a 3-3, three, three. so how big's that? It's a 3-4. So don't really want to get that. And... Sure, so what we can do... Is let's swing in Ishin at the Narset. And then they're probably going to block here. And then this is where we're going to try and do the Law Hold command. So we go plus one, indestructible, and then three damage. So three damage, and then we gain three. So hopefully this works, which it does. Fantastic. I was not prepared for this. And hopefully we get to kill the Realm Walker, which we do. Lovely. So yeah, as I said before, having Narset in a tribal Murpho deck is a bit odd. Because you're trying to dig for more creatures, otherwise your Kremainer's not doing anything. He relies on having loads of creatures out. And there you go, yeah. Fair enough. Moving on to the next game then. Sweet. So we go first against the Scarab Guard. I do like our starting hand, so we're definitely going to keep it. And that's mainly because we got... Some Ramp and Argyle's Bloodfast. Lightning Helix is nice, but I'd rather get a land, to be honest. Yeah, Lightning Helix is surprisingly good in this format. <clears throat> so we're going to call Still Heart onto Black, and uh, that means we can go for the Signing Blood if we need to. Issue with Scarab God is if they hit Critical Mass, so if they get for, go for all their... Um, so they played Scarab God with like nine mana open and stuff. We're we're pretty much screwed. So we have to be very careful to not let them get to that point. So here I could go for yeah, we'll go for the Campus and the Reinforced Ronin, which is two damage with haste. <clears throat> they might have a kill spell for this, but it's just a nice way to get a sneaky two damage in. Plus the artwork for this guy is just insane. I love the theme that. The creatures on Kamigawa, they kind of have like their regular limbs and then a third gigantic arm. Uh, it's just, yeah, really cool imagery here. Thief of Sanity. Uh, that's not good. That is not good at all. Four mana open. So I guess we can go for the Haiko Yamazaki here. So Thief of Sanity being able to cast our stuff is quite scary. Also, what else is scary is the fact that they can go for Scarab God and steal our Croxer, which we don't want to see. So they're going to mill some stuff. So if they mill an artifact, then Haiko Yamazaki can also potentially cast that. So no artifacts. Oof. Two ninjas, though. So what do we do here? Do we... Go for the law hold command and just try and kill the thief. So 
So create a thing. Try and kill the thief. I mean, they could have a counter. Okay, that's good. We don't really want that to be on the field much longer. And unfortunately, we don't have any red mana, but we could have we could have cast the uh, reinforced Ronin from the yard there. So let's see what they go for next. I really don't want to see Scarab Guard, to be honest. Yeah, this is a pretty bad matchup because they're more of a controly deck. Uh, so this guy says whenever he or another zombie dies, you draw and lose a life. Wow, that's very good. Very, very good. So we've got four mana open. What could they be doing? Artifact and enchantment. So we want to play Naomi when we have an artifact or an enchantment out. So what could we do? Uh, they could just block the 3 2, couldn't they? So, okay, we should probably just attack first and see if they do anything before the damage goes through. Ideally, I do want to get Croxer out because I don't want to get to a point where they can just use Scarab God to exile it. Okay, so they're blocking the 3 2 with the 2 2. That's interesting. Okay, I did not expect that to be honest. Um, okay, so let's go for Croxer. So even if they counter Croxer, it's fine. Uh, they choose to use Whirlwind Denial. That's interesting. Would I rather let them discard a card? <clears throat> or would I rather go for Naomi? Okay, we'll decline it because I'd rather get the five mana creature out here. So we don't have the enchantment, but next turn, if we attack, we can also get the trigger once again. Also, filling a graveyard is not too bad because that means that Croxer can come out properly. We're not clock. And Scarab Guard, sure thing. So let's definitely go for Crocs in here, and we can also get rid of anything in our graveyard that they could potentially revive. So this actually works out really well, stopping them from getting our stuff. Okay, and then, so I could attack, but they would just block it anyway, so there's probably no point. I think we go for Ish in here to maximize our mana and just pass. So this is um, a scary one because they can just revive the thief. So they've got four, five, six, seven, eight. They can revive the thief and the Josu, which is kind of terrifying. Friction Arena. So they've chosen to instead go for the long game. Right, okay. So their zombies have death touch. So they've got a 1-1 one -one death touch. Interesting. Ooh, Coligan's command. This does change things a bit. So now we can go for Argyle's blood fast. And now we can attack with both of these guys. Do you know what? I'm happy to attack with all of them. Oh, the triggers. The triggers. Okay, and then if they block with Scarab God, we can just use Coligan's command. So Croxer dies. Scarab God will kill Naomi as well. Okay, I guess that's just going to have to be the case for now. And then before we get to their turn, we're going to... So there's a couple of options here. We could just use the command to get back the Croxer and not worry about going for their artifacts? Or is getting rid of the artifacts going to be more effective here? Yeah, I think we'll, we'll get rid of the artifact. Um, I don't want to regret not doing it. So artifact, two damage. So I think we'll kill 
the Midnight Clock and the Scarab Guard, yeah. Just make them waste their turn a bit. And then we'll activate the Argos Pod faster in case we get a land. Oh, okay. Oh, they made the mistake. Yeah, I've done that before. So basically they um they didn't send it to the graveyard, they sent it to command zone, therefore, and then it cost seven mana. Rather than it going back to your hand at the end of the turn from your graveyard, yeah. I've made that mistake many times, so be careful about that, guys. Nice, so we go first against Kethis the Hidden Hand. We only have two mana though, so we're definitely gonna want to mulligan this. This is this is actually quite a good hand. So Krenko is one of the nice nicer cards in the deck. Because his attack trigger is crazy, and if you combine it with Ishin, it's very good. He attacks, puts a counter on it, and then gets that many goblins. Imagine doing that twice in one turn. So we can go for Command Tower plus Guardian Idol now. Now I am aware that Guardian Idol doesn't actually help us cast Ishin, but it is just still a good two mana ramp to help other big spells out. So let's see if we can get the Krenko out, and uh, let's fingers crossed. He survives this. Let's shock out a Sacred Foundry just in case they go for a creature. We have these horse to plowshares. <clears throat> now they're in the right colours to have a lot of kill spells, so we just have to get lucky. So here comes Kethis. Now, the psychology here is they played Kethis, which means that they do not have a board wipe. Otherwise, if they played that and then just board up next turn, then that kind of would have been pointless, wouldn't it? So we're now going to see the power of Ishin getting double triggers with Krenko. Fantastic. So, <laughs> on turn four, we have uh, a lot of creatures. So they are going to desperately need a board like that, when they still could have one. Okay, they have an Arasta. Fair enough. Now they can't safely block that well because we have the lightning helix. So let's attack again. So this is where things get l absolutely insane. So whatever they block, okay, they're going to get punished for. So we're going to definitely lightning helix it here. And uh, I'm not surprised if you see a concession after this. So we'll go for the guild gate. So I went for the white black swords just to try and get them off the Wrath of God if they do have it. But So they still get white, so they could have a board wipe here. And then that would basically <laughs> set us back a lot. But yeah, there you go. That's uh, pretty nice synergy. Opponent is going first with Minsk beloved beloved ranger so they're going to be a naya aggro deck using counters our starting hand is decent because of the extinction event and that's going to be really important versus their deck because i have a feeling they're going to go with a lot of creatures somehow and i'm going to start with what should i start with yeah i'll go for the sacred foundry the next turn i can go for the chapel and it'll be untapped because we have the planes here. So don't forget the importance of having uh, land types on dual lands. Very relevant for making these check lands coming untapped. So we could go for the Ancestral Katana, which I think is fine. So this is quite kind of cool. Whenever a Samurai Warrior attacks alone, you can pay one. If you do, it equips to it. Oh, wedding announcement. So they're going to get lots of little one ones here. So evens, odds. I don't really know what to go for yet. Could go for Rizona. So it's 3-3 three, three haste, it's pretty good. If it deals damage to a player, she gets an indestructible counter. Which is really nice. Um, but whenever damage is dealt to me, remove an indestructible counter from it. Oh, an entrepreneur procession. This is going to be hideously annoying. They're going to get so many tokens here. So she loses indestructible, but if I attack now... Okay, 
So let's go for the Fabled Passage here. I think we go for another red source. And then we can go for... So if we focus on odds, then it's fine. Attack. We get a couple of triggers with the Katana. And yeah, we might as well pay one. And then the sword goes swoosh onto the Rosona. And yeah, they can block. That's fine. So yeah, the anointed procession here is painfully powerful, but let's see if we can get through it. So they've got odd. They're gonna get two hamsters, but one of th one of them's gonna die because it's a legend. So now that flips. So what could we do here? I think definitely start with the duress. Holy crap. Holy crap. This is very tricky. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> so five drop, five drop, three, four, four. I think the thing that's going to annoy me the most is the Outlaw's Merriment because that makes tokens, but none of these actually make tokens by themselves. And then, yeah, definitely going to go for Extinction Event, choosing even, so this kills all the tokens. And then attack with Rosona. So if they want to trade here, that's fine. It's a shame that we don't have Indestructible. Now, fingers crossed they don't have another mana, or we're going to be... Oh, dear. Okay, so they get... That's a lot. That is a lot. Four guys. That is a lot of guys. Uh, how many cards in the graveyard? Four. So if we attack, we can give these to the equipment. And then it becomes a 5-5. Five, five. So they'll have to block with three things to kill our Ishin. I kind of want to set up the field to have Delina plus Croxa. So let's go for Croxa first. If we can get Croxa out and then Delina attacks. Then Delina can make copies of Croxa. And then it doesn't matter because they will just discard the whole hand eventually. So can I cast Crocs? No, I still need another card. So yeah, let's go for Delina. And then pass the turn, so we're in a lot of trouble. If they get a land, which they do, they can go for any number of scary cards there. I can't believe how stacked their hand is. Mirari's Way makes them ridiculously big. Three threes. For each samurai or warrior you control. So let's go for the Aki Ronin. And then just going to equip this to the Ronin so it can block. And then pass again. We just have to be patient here. Yeah, not having the Crocs around is a bit sad because that's going to like really help us push forward. Weirdly, we need we need them to attack so we can lose some stuff or just kill one of our things. Now the nice thing about Aki Renin is it will let us discard a card to draw a card, so we can potentially do it next turn, discarding a card. Um, preferably not the Asari Captain because this is really cool. Whenever a Samurai Warrior you control attacks alone, it gets plus one plus O for each Samurai. That's a lot of mana. So now whenever they make a token, they get two 4-4s. Four yeah, this has really escalated to horrendous levels, hasn't it? So we're going to have to go for the Asari Captain here. Attack solo with the Ronin, so we're going to get a lot of triggers. Uh, don't need to pay one because it's already equipped. So we're going to discard this. And we might as well discard that as well because it's not helpful. So we do kill two three threes, but <laughs> yeah, they've got so much power over there. Quick for three, so we might as well just play that land and pass the turn. So they've got so much mana, it's going to be pretty impossible to do much about this. Because they can also 
have Minsk turn into something huge. And until end of turn, target creature you control gets power trapped as XX becomes a giant in addition to its other types. 9-9. Nine, nine. This is a lot. I think we're going to have to block. So you'll block the 9 there. Don't have much hope for this one. Yeah, it's a shame we don't have haste. We could have basically... If we had Crocs are out a lot earlier, this would have been insane. Because Delina would have attacked and... Given it, given us clones of Croxa. Uh, so yeah, just pass the opponent, let them swing in, get that satisfying hit. So whenever Legion and Warboss attacks, they create two seven sevens. Wow. Cool. Yeah, very powerful. I just um, their hand was stacked in a way that just felt impossible. Like. They had all their mythics in the hand, essentially, which is kind of strange, but there you go. We go first against Jinga Taxius. Uh, starting hand is it's decent. We've got the Krenko, so if we can do the Krenko trick again, that'd be nice. So it's a race against basically seven mana game over. I'm not sure if this card is uh, healthy for the format, to be honest, but we'll see about that. Yeah, I, wanna, I wanted to get a red source out there so we can go for the Krenko into Ishin. So let's just hope they don't have a counter spell here. If they do, then yeah, that just sucks. Tails end. Wow, okay. Sure. Are they just going to counter all of our things? Rep ring. Um. Okay, let's go for Delina. This could be spicy. Let's see if she can survive this hit. Well, their turn even. Do they have removal? If if Jin comes out, we could be in some trouble. Three, four. We've got four mana though. I hate how the format has kind of become this thing where it's it's not even a game for it's not really a game for fun because you're kind of just fighting to survive and there's a difference because if you're fighting to survive all you're doing is stopping the inevitability of your opponent's general to instantly kill you um yeah so we've got two in the grave i guess we could let's attack so we get lots of triggers here so copy a shin Wowzers. Yeah, we'll just keep rolling. They're not legends. Holy moly. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Not actually seen that happen before. So they're at 13. And then do we crocs and now or do we give a guardian idol? I think we crocs are now because the hand is empty. Well, not not empty, but they can't counter it now. And it's nice to get rid of stuff in the hand. Oh, damn. If I had flash, what I could have done is, in response to... Well, before Dineo attacks, flash in a croxer, and then hold priority, and then uh, get Dineo to copy the croxer before it dies. That would have been sweet. If you enjoyed watching this video, why not try some of my other videos on my channel? And don't forget to support me by hitting the like and subscribe button for more content like this.